People came from all over the world to hear the music of the temple. They come to connect to God. Biblical truth is the foundation of music. The young musicians that are alive here today in Israel, more and more we see how they're pulled actually back to the musical traditions that were used by their fathers. We are all looking for inspiration for a community. It's so beautiful to see how our creations touch people around the world. Today we have a unique opportunity to uncover something incredible. Not only the written history, not only what we already know that was passed down through other texts, but also the sound of that worship, the sound of that liturgy. We can connect the historical and unique sounds of the temple through all of Jewish tradition all the way to today. And once again, for the first time in a really long time, hear the sounds, feel the music that thousands of years ago was the music that led our people together again today. What makes Israeli music so unique is the fact that it's so complex from the ethnic perspective. So many parts of the world, so many different types of music all converge in one place. I really like to see it as a, like a mosaic, and you have like all these different pieces and colors from the different countries that Jews came from, and they kind of merge. When was the last time that you and 18,000 of your closest friends got together to sing a song? We want to bring the participants the idea that if they can create a song in less than 45 minutes, they can do everything. And now as loud as you can. Since the time of the first temple, Hebrew music has been a vehicle of worship and a way for people to connect deeply with God. Eventually, the temple was destroyed and the Jewish people were exiled, taking their melodic prayers with them to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Everywhere they went, they were influenced by the music they encountered there, creating new and eclectic songs to the Lord. Today, the Jewish people are back in their land, and modern Israeli music remains influenced by these diverse styles that we adopted, and by the core value that started it all, communion with God. We're heading into downtown Jerusalem to meet with a known expert on ancient Jewish music. And we're having this interview in a very unique place in a museum in downtown Jerusalem that is dedicated to exactly that. Hey, Nechama. Hi, Good nice to, to meet you. you. So we're at the music museum. Yes, huh? this is the entrance. Let's go in. Yeah. The vision of this place is to really unite people who come here through music. We really take people on the musical journey of the Jewish people. When most people would envision what Jewish music is, it's usually not related to instruments because the holy music doesn't have instruments in it. It's mm -hmm. more vocal. Uh, it's true that it's mostly singing, but in times of the temple, they actually use musical instruments in the temple and they accompanied on many occasions and many ceremonies with musical instruments um, as well. Explain, sort of break that down in the sense of what it looked like. How many people were at the temple at the same time? How many musicians? Paint us a picture of what mm -hmm. that felt like. At the temple, it was only the Levites, basically, who were to worship, basically, with, with the musical instruments. Every day, they had different psalms that they would sing. The music was very, very powerful. People came from all over the world to hear the music of the temple. It was like a spiritual pull for them, where you feel like your soul is elevated. A person who wanted to bring a sacrifice in the temple, he was accompanied by not only musical instruments, but by also by singing that was basically adjusted to his situation. So the music helped him to basically reach a certain spiritual level where he would be, yeah, in the style of the music. So it was very a spiritual experience and we know that a lot of prophets, they actually received the prophecy when hearing the music in the temple. Jonah received the prophecy and it was known that he received it on the high holidays after he experienced the joy of the temple, of the people dancing and, and singing and, and the musicians. The hundreds of Levites on the Temple Mount, tens of thousands of people singing, chanting, you know, yeah. banging on the drums together. It's easy to understand why you would want to engage in something like that. Right. What here dates all the way back to the Temple time? Basically everything. Walking through the museum was like taking a journey through Jewish history. That's quite a sound. 
Yeah, so there's really also like use in, in times of, of the temple. It depicted how the Jewish people spread across the globe as they were expelled from country after country. It's called the Kamanche. It comes from Azerbaijan. We have a Moroccan violin. The santo is actually one of the most ancient instruments that we have here in the museum, 500 years BC. Along their way, they incorporated all the new musical styles they encountered into their songs of worship to the God of Israel. Do I get to try? Yes, your turn. I should stick to my day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Many Jews eventually settled in countries around Europe. It was there that the more recognizable modern Jewish sounds originated from. So this is looking more familiar. Welcome to the European room, basically. And klezmer music is actually influenced by gypsies. The, the musicians, they traveled throughout Europe and they wanted to kind of go to the different communities. They didn't want to take with them like a huge violin to kind of carry with them, it was too heavy. Something fits in a small briefcase. Exactly. This is a pocket violin. We have an accordion, cello, a bass, obviously the clarinet you know. So what's this, Mchama? This is an instrument called oud, mm -hmm. and it's from Iraq. And to end our tour, I had the privilege of hearing these ancient instruments brought to life. The content of the song is uh, basically God is speaking to the land of Israel and says, Boi legani, come back to my garden. Beautiful. There's something so peaceful in the music. Yeah. You know, like something about the pitch is just right. Shalom from Jerusalem. How beautiful it is to hear the sounds of music all the way from Israel. Yeah, we, we've been on an incredible journey. Just seeing how, regardless of whether things were good or times were bad, the Jewish people used music and instruments to connect to God and then to connect to each other wherever they were in the world. Immediately, something comes to my mind is Psalm 136, where the people of Israel are sitting in Babylon and they say, we cannot worship God in music. We cannot sing those beautiful songs because we are in the diaspora. I mean, that's the incredible story of, of Jewish music, where it goes full circle. You know, it comes from Israel, goes through, you know, the ages in, in, in the diaspora, many countries, many influences, and then it comes back to Israel mm -hmm. and brings back all of that to this land. And then we have different instruments and different styles, and we enjoy that mm -hmm. very music today. Let's watch some more of that music. Let's go. Put your hands up. When the road looks dark, you know. Remember this unbreakable bond. Hold on to what you know. A joint experience of worship, of music, has been part of our heritage and our culture, going all the way back to the first musical references in the Bible. And now we're heading into downtown Tel Aviv to meet a group called Kululam, who are taking that whole expression and bringing it into modern times. They're connecting groups of people to powerfully experience music together in a group in the same way that we always have through history. Maybe start with describing what Kululam is. Well, Kululam is a social musical initiative. We're trying to inspire people through a musical harmony. We do that by taking a well-known song, writing a new arrangement for it. We invite sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of people. We teach them the new arrangement. We all perform the final song together. So how did this whole concept come to life? I saw thousands of people praying in the most uh, holy place in Israel, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. To see thousands of people, men, women, children in all ages, standing there and praying, I asked myself if musical harmony can create harmony in humanity. 
I had the privilege of being at one of the events recently. It's possibly the, one of the most powerful musical experiences I've, I've, I've been part of. You see people go through this stage of they're hesitant, but then they break out of that, they start to sing. And it's this really deep connection, and it's very powerful. Here you're coming to be part of something that is bigger than yourself, part of a new creation. In Kurulam, there is a miracle because so many people coming together and learn a whole new arrangement in half an hour. Generally speaking, it's not possible. And somehow it works. Kululam films every one of their shows and distributes them online. Their videos have helped them build a large online following, win awards, and impact people throughout the world. So you had one of your songs become a Super Bowl thing. Well, what is the story of that song? We got together with an NGO called One of Nine for raising the awareness for early examining of breast cancer. And we invited 2,000 women of different stages of the disease to come and sing with us, mm -hmm. Let's Get Loud, by Jennifer Lopez. very spiritual and inspiring event. And then we got a mail from the musical director of JLo, and she tell that JLo really liked our arrangement and she want to take it to one of her shows. But the show were actually the Super Bowl show. She took your musical arrangement yeah, and of, used for, for her song. She, did, she asked our permission oh. to use her song with our arrangement so let's get loud. Okay, well, let, let's rephrase. J-Lo looked at the song and said, well, they did it better than I did originally. <laughs> Can we use this arrangement for our halftime show? Not only is singing with Kululam a moving experience, it's also fun. And being the lover of music that I am, there's no way I'm leaving the studio without singing a song with them. Are you ready? It's gonna sound like this. One day, one day, one day, one day, join me. One day, one day, one day, one day. Let's try to do the whole thing. I'm gonna miss the time. I know it. I'm with you, and they are gonna be together. I'll try. Are we ready? Let's go. All my life, I've been waiting for. I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more wars, and our children will say one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day. One day. There's this constant process of singing through scripture that we remember that very powerfully. If you would play for me or sing for me now a Shabbat song, like I feel it in my body, I feel it in my heart, and because of the music and because of the singing. Sometimes people ask me, where you got energy on the stage? So much joy, and, so, and I said, what are you talking about? That's what you bring to me, and I just reflect it to you. And that's the magic that's happening there. One day, one our history and our heritage live through us. And there is nowhere that we can express and experience this quite like when we do through music. What makes Israeli music so special is that it is soulful, it's spiritual, and it's inspired by Holy Scripture and the incredible power of group prayer. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions in comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.